I guess Boomerang is, is almost upon us now. It's getting very, very close. Does it feel like this is the, the realisation of something you've been working on for a little while? or? It certainly does. Um, Peter and I have actually been in discussion since about early 2010, looking at getting this project up. Um, and yes, we're just a few weeks out. Great lineup, and it's coming to fruition. I think one of the biggest things, though, has been how the artists have valued what the festival actually is. It's more than a festival. It really is, on a cultural level, very much about a gathering. But on, I guess, a national level, it's really about unification. Yeah. I guess, you know, as well, looking at the lineup, there's obviously the, the musical element, which has, you know, got a lot of the big familiar name, but there's also the, the comedy and theatre and the, the film element. Was that always part of the plan to, to bring those things in? Absolutely. The... Uh... You know, it, it's the whole spectrum of indigenous culture. It, it's from, we're going to have chefs there. We're going to have a film festival. We're going to have traditional dancers or even, or even more modern people doing more modern styles, yeah? We're going to have hip hop acts. We're going to get right through to traditional musics. We, we, we're going to have people speaking. Oh, Riley, you probably can carry that more than I can even. You're speaking about everything from what it is to, 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 to be a part of the black experience, politically, culturally, I, I, you know, spiritually. I, I mean, to me, for Australian people, you know, people like me who's, you know, come from people who moved to this country at some point in our history, you know, whether it be your, your dad or your great, great, great grandfather, if reconciliation is really going to work in this country, it's not just a word. It's going out there and getting to learn about the original culture of our country so that we have that experience. And can I say this? If you've got children, bring them. Because that's how we change this country. We're all getting to know each other better. And that's how we make black aspiration actually occur, where people have an ability through their culture and, 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 retain, and through retaining their culture to grow in this country and to find their place in their own land at an even deeper level. Sorry, bro, you were No, it's actually good you Peter mentioned depth because, yes, there is the music, there's Gurumul, you know, Archie Roach, Shelley Morris, Casey Donovan, the list goes oh, on. Wow. Amazing musicians and songwriters. But it is that depth, it is about the experience. So, you know, if you want to come, you can sit with old ladies and learn how to weave. But you can actually learn how to process the grass that grows actually on all the highways in the East Coast. So you can go home and keep making a fish trap or a basket. Or you can get at a deeper level where we've got panels and conversations and some of them are very funny, but there's other things like the F word. That's not the swear word, or it could be. But it is about feminism. Like Aboriginal women and First Nations people around the world have a view on feminism, but no one's ever heard it. Because the only time you get a platform to hear what blackfellas talk about is whether it's land rights and native title. Well, they've got opinions on everything and it's sometimes very comical and sometimes very sincere. And for us this year, I guess there is a, a sort of a deep level. And I think for many of our artists, you know, we saw the passing this year of Mr. Unipingu um, from Yothi Yindi. And... What a lot of Australians, I guess, don't realise is this year is so significant for our history, our modern history as Australians. 50 years ago, prior to the famous Martin Luther King um, speech that everyone knows, in Australia, six months before that, with the civil uprising occurring in Alabama, in Australia, the Yolngu people were heading to our federal parliament with a map, a bark petition, about their lands and mapping country because we didn't have geographical maps. So this was their way of going, okay, we'll do a deal with Nabalco and this is what we want. Now that's extraordinary when you think it was before that civil rights movement, which then we got back in the 70s. It's those sorts of stories that a lot of people don't know about, but when they do, that's Australian history. And it just connects us a little bit more. So I think, you know, we really want to sell Boomerang on the experience. Come and get to know us and you'll actually see that we've got so much in common rather than the differences.
Yeah, I guess, you know, Blues Fest has, has been hugely successful over the years and has its own little vibrant experience and people recognise it as well for the act of, uh, for that experience and the, the adventure of it. Do you feel like um, there's going to be a similar sort of experience or is Boomerang going to find its own little niche? Can, can I just say that when, when we first in the early days of Blues Fest, you look back 25 years and, and, and history has always got to be looked at in what was happening then and why you do something. Because you look back from, you know, quarter of a century later, you know, there were no blues festivals. There, there were no opportunities for those artists to get out there and play on events. Um, and so we, we just went, as a festival, we want to give that opportunity. But then we went, hang on a minute, there's also no alternate country rock festivals. And there's definitely nothing happening in areas where... Um, where folk musicians are pretty much doing anything else but singing about Welsh mining, you know, strikes in 1920. And, and we just went, let's just embrace all the other side of the music business. It's funny, I, I see events now, um, you know, and, and it's, it's in the mid-90s when we were doing the Ben Harpers and bringing all these artists that, that, that brought the whole new Roots music movement in, or, or, or Bluegrass and all that, and I, and I see so many artists playing at other events nowadays, and, and, and I go, if it, we weren't out there first as the trailblazers, you guys wouldn't be doing what you do. I, a certain festival just cancelled. And I, and I look at our bill and I go, well, we've been doing that for 15 years. You know, but, and yet still have blues and that stuff at the roots of it. I always remember something. And this, this was said to me by Junior Marvin, the lead guitar player from Bob Marley and the Whalers, and he sat me down one time, he said, Peter Noble, you are the black music promoter of this country, you have been for 10, 15 years, and that time that, not, you, know, you hardly saw a black face on, my, on most of the major um, music festivals, you didn't. Maybe you saw a few doing rap, but it was always so misogynist. It wasn't a good look for, for, for uh, you know, what, what actual, that culture is, you know, and I'm talking in general, Afro-American or African. Um, and he said, but you know what, you actually work in politics. And I said, oops, what's this one about? And he said, well, Bob Marley sat me down. And what Bob said to me is this. He said, listen, to be in the Wales is just to understand what it's really all about and what I'm about, what my music is about, what I'm really saying. And let's not, for, let's not forget that, you know, Bob Marley still has the voice that people are listening to all over the world. He hasn't faded. He hasn't dated. It's like Jimi Hendrix in his own way. Um, and Bob said, look, when you're working in black music, you're working in politics. And I'm going, okay. And he goes, and I'll tell you why, because it's about black aspiration. And we know something. Generally, we can run faster than you guys. That's why we win in all the races, run, run it. And we can definitely box better than this. <laughs> we knock you on your butts all the time. And the only time you ever listen to us is when we're on a stage. So when you're on that stage, make sure you're saying something for your people to advance their courses and to Get them to the places where they're going and don't waste that opportunity. And then Junior says, so that's what you're doing. You're giving black aspiration the opportunity to advance their culture and their position, their, 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 you know, to, to, to move from you know, people who are underemployed to working class to middle class. It's all part of what we do in music, in culture. This is why, to some degree, I've been out there attacking, as you know, the major daily media, because I'm going, guys, if the best of indigenous culture is not good enough, I actually say, your paper's not good enough. Because I think the best of indigenous culture in this country is more than good enough. And I, and I can't wait to be involved in this event, and I can't wait to say, it's been too long since I've done it. Because I should have done this years ago, and I can't wait. And ever since we've gone out there, by the way, there's a little go, and I, and I must apologise to Noel Mingle, because I did have a go at him with the Korean mail when he'd already done something. And I'll take that on and I apologise, because that's not fair to actually attack someone who has done something. But hey, since we've got, we, we polarise people, and that's part of what we were trying to do, is get all these people who care to come out. We've had the people who bring the Dalai Lama, you know, send everything out to their databases, and we've gone out to people, and all of a sudden, we've gone from struggling to sell a couple of thousand tickets a week ago, but over, we just sold us about seven, eight hundred tickets in the last week or more. And all of a sudden, it's selling, because people are going, I actually care. And I think enough Australians do care about a better Australia, and you will never have a better Australia until we embrace our own original Indigenous people. It can't happen. Whilst they're struggling, we 
do not have the social, spiritual or moral right to say Australia is the best country in the world, because it isn't. Mm -hmm.